What a delight to have you today, last Tuesday in September. Sorry to remind you of that. We're asking God's blessing on you today. Heavenly Father, bless us as we open up your word from the book of Exodus that we might be inspired in our faith. For we ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Ooh, we got a great story again today that kind of sounds exactly like, I don't know, the same story that we read last week. Do you remember last week how the people of Israel were complaining and griping about God's lack of provision and how God was going to send them out in the wilderness to starve to death? It's going to be the exact same lesson today. Uh, well, it isn't the exact same lesson. It's just the exact same lesson maybe a month down the road. They still hadn't learned their lesson yet. Well, there's a reason for that. So again, it's that repetition of stories that happens in the Bible. No water again! How do you think the Jews are going to respond? I'm, I'm not going to tell you, by the way. But I will say this. Remember, in the Bible, the most predictable people in the planet are people. Well, okay, I gave the answer, didn't I? The most predictable characters in the Bible are human beings. We always respond the same way. Remember 1 Kings. And they did what was evil in this God's sight. And they did what was evil in God's sight. And they did what was evil in God's sight. Oh, and this is the worst king in the world. And this king was worse than that king. And that king was worse than that king. We always do the same thing over and over and over again because, gosh, we are just absolutely predictable. Okay? The most unpredictable character in the Bible is God. And so these stories are really about God. What's God going to do when we keep doing the same thing over and over again. I think oftentimes what we find is God is really magnanimous and patient with us, which is really comforting to know because I do the same stupid thing over and over again. They always tell you you should learn from your mistakes. We don't learn from our mistakes. Listen to the book again from book of Exodus 17. If you joined us last week, you're going to hear the exact same story little different context. That's it. So the congregation of the sons of Israel journeyed in stages to the wilderness of sin according to the command of the Lord and camped at Rephidim and there was no water for the people to drink. Sounded familiar? Therefore the people quarreled with Moses, same, same word again, and said, give us water that we may drink. Moses said to them, why do you quarrel with me? Again, Moses throwing God under the bus. It's his fault. Don't quarrel with me. I'm just the messenger, man. Why do you quarrel with me? Why do you test the Lord? But the people thirsted there for water, and they grumbled against Moses and said, Why now have you brought us to Egypt to kill us and our children and our livestock with thirst? This is the exact same phrase that was used in last week's lesson. So Moses cried out to the Lord, Lord! What shall I do with these people? A little more and they're going to stone me. He's afraid for his life. Oh, poor baby. So the Lord said to Moses, I know, by the way, these side comments are not in the Bible. I hope you get that. If you don't, I apologize. So verse 5, the Lord said to Moses, Pass before with the people and take with you some of the elders of Israel and take in your hand your staff with which you struck the Nile and go. Behold, I will stand before you there on the rock at Horb, and you shall strike the rock, with, and water will come out of it. And the people may then drink. So Moses did this uh, sign in the sight of the elders of Israel. And he named the place Massah and Meribah because of the quarrel of the sons of Israel, because they tested the Lord, saying, Is the Lord among us or not? Do you, do you remember again the... Uh, the, the name Israel means the one who wrestled with God and won. The Jews are always a quarrelsome, troublesome, struggling people. They're always questioning and doubting because guess who they represent? Oh, that's right, you and me. We are the quarrelsome people. I just, but I love this because the Bible is such a real book. It tells us who we are. It holds a mirror up to our face. It says, this is who you are. But guess what? God still loves you. That's what I find amazing. Because if God were like us, God would have been done with these people a long time ago. But God continues to surprise us. Because remember, who is the most unpredictable character in the Bible again? God is. And God just keeps coming back and finding creative ways 
to get us on God on board with God's plan. And we keep finding the same, keep doing the same thing. I'm finding ways to jump off God's bandwagon. I don't know. It's, we're just crazy that way. That's us. So you're meant to see yourself in this. These are timeless stories. <sighs> so there they go. So they test the Lord saying, is the Lord amongst us or not? So there you go. And then we have a battle. I'm going to read a portion of this because this is a point of lesson for today. I don't want to focus on the battle. It's with the Amalekites and they fought the Amalekites. And Well, yeah, I do. I'm going to erase this. Read this. So the Amalekites then came and fought against Israel at Rephidim. And Moses said to Joshua, you've heard that name, choose men for us to go out and fight against the Am Amalekites. Tomorrow I will station myself on the top of the hill with the staff of God in my hand. So Joshua did as Moses told him and fought against the Amalekites. And Moses, Aaron, and Hur went up to the top of the hill. So it came to pass when Moses held up his hands, that is a prevail. But when his hands got heavy and he let his hands down, the Amalekites prevailed. But Moses' hands were so heavy. Then he, so they took a stone and put it under him. And he sat on it. And Aaron and her supported his hands, one on one side and the other on the other. So he had some help. <laughs> Thus his hands were steady until the sun set, and Joshua overwhelmed the Amalekites and his people with the edge of the sword. The Lord said to Moses, Write this in the book as a memorial and recite it to Joshua, that I will utterly blot out the memory of the Amalekites from under heaven. Moses built an altar and named it, The Lord is my banner. And he said, the Lord has sworn, the Lord will have war against the Amalekites from generation to generation. Well, I'm going to stop there. I don't want to necessarily go so much on the war, but I do want to focus on what happened during the war with Moses' arms, because I think this is part of the Bible lesson today that's really kind of interesting and intriguing. So like, like I said, no water again, same scenario set up. Of course, God, in a very unpredictable name, manner, provides for them again with a striking of a rock. And God provides out of a rock water. Well, that doesn't seem right. Well, remember, God is very unpredictable. You never know how God is going to fulfill our needs. Oh, I want to tell a story. I want to tell a story. Because God, as I said to you, is really unpredictable. And that's what you're supposed to get out of this lesson about God. Of a Moses striking a rock. Well, who in the world could get water out of a rock? Well, God can. Nobody else could. God can. It reminds me of a story years ago, 20 years ago almost, when my band, Splintered, traveled to New York City. We were contracted to go for the ELCA to New York City for a youth convention there at St. John University. We got there, and there was a musician, traveling musician named Ken Miedema, who's a blind pianist and, and so forth. A reputation, but he wasn't exact. He's never been a children's or youth rock and roll musician okay we were the rock and roll band and we were going to come in and play some rock and roll music for these kids during the festival and and so forth so we get out there and the the director of the region seven youth thing said well we don't need you anymore we're just paying ken Miedema to do your concert we're like we travel from pittsburgh here in a rickety old van that was falling apart by the way and you're telling me that you're not going to allow us to play? We were depending on the money to be able to pay for the van. We don't even have enough money to get here. We're coming here in faith. So we were cut off. We had no money. We had nowhere to stay. We didn't know what to do. But what we decided to do at the same time that Ken Miedema was playing a concert and I guess the auditorium or wherever, we would play a concert up front because we knew the kids were not going to... Ken Miedema, by the way, is great. But he, again, is not a youth musician. So we were there playing on the rock, rock and roll and I, out there in the, uh, in, in the quad. They, 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 they let us, the, the school allowed us to take some of the electricity and put power up there. And next thing you know, a couple hundred people, five, six, seven, nine hundred kids came out and were watching us. Nobody went there to watch Ken Miedema. They said there were maybe 50 kids by the time he was done. We're rocking, we're rocking, rocking. And next thing you know, it. Our music stops. I'm like, we're playing and there's no music coming out. What in the world's going on? We blow a fuse. No. Somebody had turned off our music because one of the adult leaders died of a heart attack right in front of our stage. I will tell you what, we were just getting ready 
to sell our CDs. That was the only way we we're going to make money to make this trip worthwhile. So not only did we lose that, the money that we're supposed to get from the Region 7 ELCA, we didn't get paid. We lost our money for selling our CDs. And we're like, you've got to be kidding me. What are we going to do? Yeah, of course, there's a the guy that died, but we're worried about ourselves, right? That just shows you we're, we're doubting God. The next day, we got up and we drove, and we're kind of really down. This is the worst time in the world for a band. We had a great concert, but we're coming home with nothing. Everybody's reaching their pockets, pulling out 10 bucks to put money into this gas tank of this, this 1975 Ford van or whatever it was, and this is a gas guzzler. And we have to get off and get some gas. We get off of Clinton, New Jersey, and I'm pulling around the bend, and I'm turning the wheel, and all of a sudden, crack, the steering wheel breaks. And just spins around and around and around and around and around. You can't get, we're stopped there. All I can say is, and I'm just like, I can't believe that God would do this to us. It's a Saturday night in Clinton, New Jersey. Do you know what happens in a Saturday night in Clinton, New Jersey? Nothing, okay, nothing. Absolutely nothing. There were nothing. There was nothing open. There were no car dealers open. There was no shop open. We couldn't get our vehicle repaired. We don't have any money. Where are we going to stay? We can't. We, we finally were able to get a, a, a AAA to move the van to a car shop, but the guy outright told us I was going to sit there till Monday, and then I won't get parts till probably Thursday or Friday to be able to fix that van. We don't have. What are we going to do? Next thing you know, it. A van pulls up right beside us and says, hey, do you need help? It's a van for a Baptist Spanish-speaking camp. They picked us up, they took us out to the camp, and we got to be with all these Spanish speakers. Couldn't understand a word they were saying, because none of us spoke Spanish. But they were the loveliest people. They, loved, they fed us, they asked us to do a mini concert for them. And they were just so thrilled to have us. We led them in worship. And we spent all week in Clinton, New Jersey. <laughs> it was the most awesome week of it all. Um, wasn't my plan. And in retrospect, you realize God provided. But it wasn't my plan didn't happen the way I expected it to. I was sitting there, God, why would you do this? Why would my steering column break? Why did we not get paid? All of these things God used for the most spectacular time our band ever had, the most wonderful memories. You know, sometimes we completely forget how God blesses us. We quarrel with God. We quarrel with Moses. Moses, don't gripe with me, the drama queens. You brought us out here to die. And this is kind of like us in the van. Moses, these people are going to kill me. Once again, God provides water from a stone, a place that water should not be able to come out of. A Baptist church, Spanish speaking, out of the middle of nowhere, right when our car breaks down in Clinton, New Jersey. God provides. <laughs> and we go into the battle. This is kind of an amazing thing. Hands up. Remember, did you hear that? As long as Moses' hands were up, the battle was won. When his hands came down, they lost. I think this is as much metaphorical as anything else. When our hands are up to God, we're looking at the right thing. When our hands are down like this, we're looking at all the problems. Oh my gosh, I can't believe everything that's going on. Oh, look to God. God's going to provide. Oh, I can't believe how terrible things are. Look to God. God is going to provide. I think that's the reason for the story immediately after the water story. Okay? It's a funny anecdote, because a funny anecdote is Moses' arms are getting tired. He can't hold them up anymore, and so he sits down on the stone, and you have, uh, you have Joshua and, and her, or I'm sorry, Aaron and her holding up his arms. Okay? It's funny. It's, we're supposed to laugh at this. We have help from other people to prop our arms up to remind us to look to God. Huh. when we no longer have the strength to do it. 
Isn't this an amazing lesson? Again, I'm not saying it didn't happen, but what I am trying to tell you is this lesson was written in a way that it's a timeless story. Yeah, we're predictable. Horrible things are going to happen. We're going to feel like the world is falling apart. Look up to God. When our strength fails us and our arms fall, there's somebody there to lift them up for us. God always provides the Baptist church, Spanish-speaking kids, who are the people who prop our arms up. When we were looking down at all of our problems, this Spanish-speaking Baptist camp came and lifted our arms up and restored our faith. So I know it's easy to fall into despair. We all do. It's a human thing to do because we are so predictable. But God always provides. And when we can no longer look up, God provides us with people to hold our arms up for us. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we're struggling right now. But you hold our arms up. <laughs> and when our arms get weak and weary, you provide somebody there to help us. So we stop looking at all the problems. The lack of money. The steering wheel that broke. Being stranded in Clinton, New Jersey for a week. When we just wanted to be home with our families. But you provided us with people to hold our arms up. This is a replaying of this exact same story. 3,000 years later. And you're going to keep doing for this for us day by day. I know we doubt. We struggle. We wrestle. Life can be hard. Things are difficult right now. Let's lift our arms up and look up. And provide for us people to lift our arms up for us when we just run out of energy. For you ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Oh. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit.